significant damage to that home. All right, we bring in Chief Meteorologist Jamie Warner. And Jamie, you, you know, you tracked the path of these storms today. I know the people that got hit, whether it was by hail or lightning or maybe straight line winds, they don't feel fortunate at all. But you get the sense that the widespread damage that was possible didn't materialize today. Yeah, I think, you know, the big takeaway for me today was that, you know, we went in today thinking that this was going to be mainly a large hail event. And while there was some hail, uh, it was generally golf ball size or less, and it was very spotty. What was more widespread was the wind damage and the high wind reports that we started seeing uh, really going back to I-49 early this afternoon and then stretching across the state, at least in Adent and Shannon counties. Outside right now, skies are, are partly cloudy. Temperatures at this hour have dropped into the mid-50s, uh, 56 degrees. That is our low for the day here in Springfield. Uh, high temperatures were in the upper 70s and low 80s. Another record high set in West Plains at 82 degrees, 78 today in Springfield. Of course, it was that warmth and also that humidity. Today was one of those really, truly uh, humid days, one of the first ones of this year. And that contributed to the intense thunderstorms that we had move across the area. Now, the headlines for me, if I had to just sum it up into four lines, these were the headlines for me. Uh, damage south of Nixa. We showed you those houses where the roofs were damaged. That correlates with where a tornado warn storm moved through. So it's going to be interesting to see when the National Weather Service goes out and surveys the damage, what they find. Was that a weak tornado? Uh, also, the damaging winds that we had developed from Christian County all the way to Shannon and Dent counties at the very least. So we had a corridor of strong winds, a derecho. Uh, reported gusts of 65 to 75 miles per hour. Also a lot of reports of damage within that quarter. There were some spotty wind reports outside of that zone as well, along with spotty reports of hail, generally golf ball size or smaller. Uh, now, earlier at the onset of these storms, we did get some very large hail reported in parts of Oklahoma. In fact, there was one storm that crossed over into Benton County, northwest Arkansas, that produced softball size hail west of Bentonville. For us, though, you saw a transition, a transition from hail in Oklahoma to wind across our area as the storms went from being individual in nature to more of a line. And that line continues to plow east into Kentucky and Tennessee, and it stretches back across Arkansas into Texas. And along that line, we've still got a lot of severe thunderstorm warnings, and occasionally we're still seeing tornado warnings. Locally in our area, again, the rain's shutting down, although it's still falling in northern Arkansas. We're still getting a few spotty lightning strikes. That all should gradually fade over the next several hours. The cold front hasn't yet moved across I-44, although it will be, I think, as we work through midnight tonight. And it looks like uh, we are going to find uh, very little chance for any shower activity along that front as it crosses through. And by tomorrow morning, it uh, looks like we're just going to be looking at cloudy and cool conditions, maybe a little bit of mist. The clouds will persist through the morning hours, but should thin out as we get into the afternoon. I think we end on a bright note across the area. Morning low of 46, an afternoon high close to 60. Uh, looks like we'll probably hit 60 further north. I think we'll hit 60 to the south where there will be a bit more sunshine. But here along I-44 where I think the clouds will persist through the morning and then break up as we get into the afternoon. That's where highs will generally be in the upper 50s. Winds out of the northeast at 5 to 15 miles per hour. Weekend, nice rebound on Saturday up to 67 for the high. Looks like a mild day. Winds not terribly strong out of the west at 10 miles per hour. This is good news. We have our St. Patrick's Day Parade here in Springfield. Uh, we will be out there. Uh, we will be uh, touring in our new uh, storm tracker. And it uh, looks like uh, weather conditions pretty good for a parade. We're going to find readings in the mid to upper 60s. Again, winds not terribly strong and skies look pretty bright with mostly sunny to partly cloudy skies. Uh, looks like that mild weather on Saturday will be giving way to a stout shot of cold as we enter next week and uh, it looks like Monday we're looking at highs in the 40s. So we get a day of winter temperatures on Monday, but uh, after a few morning freezes, we're back to spring temperatures Tuesday and Wednesday with highs back up near 70 degrees. Bailey. All right. Thanks, Jamie. We aren't quite done with our weather coverage yet.